let's turn to Romans chapter 8. My text comes from verse 2, but we're going to read a little bit of the context. We'll start with Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So what has Jesus accomplished in our behalf? He has set us free. First of all, the, the law of sin and death that we're talking about is what he's talking about in Romans 7, 21. Just a couple verses earlier, he says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So the nature of this law is this law cap takes people into captivity. So whenever, whenever you would do good, whenever you want to do good, evil is present with you. So, and this law leads to death because it is contrary to the law of God. So what I want to do is I want to do a little, little overview of the, our history, if we can call it that. What, how we became in bondage and how Christ has set us free. So Romans 5.12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him who was to come. So the law of sin and death is not satisfied with one man. The law of sin and death will not stop with one sin. This law takes people into captivity so they may order you around. As soon as it has you in captivity, as soon as you have one sin, it will, it will take hold of you. And whenever you would do good, evil is present with you. John 8, 34. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Now, first of all, if Jesus said something, we know it's true. Now, Jesus is making it completely sure. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And we know that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So God sent a law to show us the way to go. Deuteronomy 30, 15. See, I've set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. And then I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days of Upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. But 
and the law was weak through the flesh. All these things depended on us following the commandments of God. But the law was weak through our flesh. Romans 8, 7 says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So it's impossible for someone in the flesh to please God because his mind is held captive to the law of sin and death. And you, you can't serve the law of sin and death and the law of God. It, what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Matthew 6, 24, No man can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Amen. So you can't serve the law of sin and death and the law of God, and the law is not strong enough to deliver from the law of sin and death. Amen. So it says, when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. So Exodus 2.23, our case was as the children of Israel's. It says, and it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage and they cried and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage and God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob and God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. So as the law does its work, we see that we're in bondage, and we can't serve God acceptably. And we cry, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? See, the law showed us that we needed to be delivered from the body of this death. But praise God, the cry did come up to him, and God heard our groaning. And the answer is, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. But we don't live after the flesh. Amen. Galatians 4, 3, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But with the, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Amen. So God heard our cry, and he sent forth his son, and his son came proclaiming, The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, Amen. and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Amen. Hebrews 2.14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. And Romans 6.6, 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Amen. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Amen. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with them, 
him. Then skipping down to verse 11, it says, Likewise, reckon also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. So it is clear that this is a work of God. See, no man's wisdom could figure this out, and no man could do it other than the Son of God. So we are cru crucified with Christ. Our man who was caught in bondage under the law of sin and death is crucified with Christ. And we are born a free man. We are free born, brethren. Our birth, first birth was from the first Adam into bondage, but our new birth is of the second Adam into freedom and life everlasting. Amen. The flesh could not be changed to serve God, so we were born a new creature. Amen. So when, when Christ brings, brings life, he, he brings freedom with it. John eleven forty three, 43, was when Jesus was at Lazarus' tomb, and when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Psalm 40, verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. See, we're given a picture of our bondage. We're in this deep pit. It's pits are hard to get out of, but when you got miry clay in the bottom sucking at your feet, there was no deliverance from man. Now I want to look at the bondage of the children of Israel for a minute. The children of Israel were in bondage under the king of Egypt, and he oppressed them, and they were made to labor for him and do his works. And God sent Moses, his servant, to deliver the people. And first God turned their river into blood. He turned the river of Egypt into blood. And he brought frogs all over the land. All these things were to, so that Pharaoh would let the people go. He turned the dust into lice. He covered the land with flies. He killed all the cattle in Egypt. He sent boils on man and beast. And hail, it said hail with fire mingled in. And he covered the land with locusts. And then finally, God sent darkness over the land, darkness which could be felt. But this was not enough to set the people free. So God slew all the firstborn in Egypt, and then Pharaoh let them go. But he hardened his heart, and he chased the Lord's people through the wilderness, and God opened up the sea. And the children of Israel went through and the Egyptian army followed, and the sea closed on the Egyptians and covered them all. Deuteronomy 26, 6, And the Egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. And when we cried unto the Lord God of our fathers, the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And with an outstretched arm, and with great terribleness, and with signs and wonders. So what God did to deliver Egypt was a great work. It was clearly the work of God and not of man. He, he used a strong arm. But what God did with Egypt is just a shadow. 
We're looking at this shadow and it's glorious. But what Christ did was so much greater. Sin held us so much tighter. Colossians 2.13 And you being dead in sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way nailing it to his cross and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it no, no, when you think about, usually things in the spiritual realm are a lot harder than things in the physical realm. And also, the Israelites were in bondage in Egypt, but we were dead in our sins. So Christ has raised up a group of captive dry bones. <laughs> this is a great work. And the children of Israel turned back in their hearts toward Egypt after they had been delivered. But Christ has given us a new heart so that it may be a lasting salvation. And so it was much, a much greater work that Christ did than what was done to the children of Israel. And yet Christ still spoiled principalities and powers. And he made a show of them openly. Now, John 8, 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall, set you, shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the Son abideth ever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. Well, I want to tell you something. The devil doesn't want you to know the truth. Because when you know the truth, you are set free. When you know what Christ has accomplished on your behalf, you're not bound by the law of sin and death anymore. Amen. So next time the flesh commands you to sin, when you, you start wanting to do something good and the flesh says, oh, do this, go sin, you can say, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. And now I'm a servant of righteousness, and I will yield my members, servants, to righteousness unto holiness. Amen. And when you know the truth that Jesus has set you free, you can say, He is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they all shall wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. Amen. I want to leave you with this one exhortation. Galatians 5.1 Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And Joshua 24.16 And, all, and the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought, up, brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore, will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. Amen. Amen.